So today we're going to be talking about trading binary options during OTC markets or even trading binary on the weekends. And specifically in this video, guys, we're going to be going over a lot of valuable content, which I know you're going to enjoy, including the rules of this particular strategy that I'm going to be teaching you today. And of course, the indicators that we will be implementing to help us find profitable trading positions. Now, the beauty of this strategy is that it's very simple and easy to follow. So it's also ideal for beginner traders, but it's also effective when used properly. So we're going to be teaching you everything that you need in this video, along with some additional exciting information, such as results from the strategy and live trading footage. So ladies and gentlemen, if that sounds good to you, make sure that you smash the like button. And if you're new to the channel, or if you haven't already, subscribe and turn on notifications that we'd miss out on any of our future updates. Now, without further ado, let's roll the footage. Let's get to it. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Paul Casado. Thank you guys for tuning in for this brand new update. It feels so good to finally be back providing you with videos and providing content here on our channel for the fact that we've been MIA. We haven't done anything for the past three weeks. And I do appreciate each and every single one of you who have reached out, guys. For those of you who didn't know, I was actually sick. Uh, me and my wife were sick for 12, 13 days uh, with, well, I don't know if I could say it on YouTube, but basically we got a a flu like a very very popular flu that type of flu that you know everyone's talking about for the past couple of years um, unfortunately we got it and we were run down for 12 13 days and then we needed a few more days to kind of recuperate uh, you know from this flu like event and it was not fun um, and it was because of that you know we have been so quiet here in the community we have not posted any videos because we've been dealing with that but I am grateful for everyone who somehow found out and reached out to us. I really appreciate your love and support, guys. Um, and I'm really excited to finally be back. And I figured, you know, as we were getting close to, you know, feeling better and I'm thinking, about, oh, okay, I need, I need to post some content. Uh, what are we going to talk about? And I figured that we should talk about something that we either haven't talked about in a very long time or something that we haven't talked about at all. Something new, something refreshing, something exciting. And that's what gave me the idea of trading binary option training on weekends or during OTC market hours. So I'm going to explain everything that you need in this video. Now, I do also want to point out, guys, that uh, for this particular strategy and trading on weekends in general, um, I typically don't trade on weekends. I don't typically trade uh, during OTC, but I do understand that there are a lot of you out there who are watching this video who have uh, other responsibilities and you live in different time zones and different regions, so you have different schedules and maybe the only time that you do have time to trade are during OTC hours or during the weekend. So regardless, if you're one of those people or not, we're going to share with you this pretty cool strategy that you might even want to try out, even if you never tried OTC before. Um, maybe you trade during regular market hours. Uh, we're going to share something with you that is pretty cool, pretty exciting, and more importantly, very effective guys, okay? So bear with us. If you have any questions, if you need help with anything, you can reach out to us anytime uh, by dropping a comment down below, or you can email me directly anytime and I'll be more than happy to help. And don't forget that if if you are new to trading or if you've been struggling in your trading, you're either not seeing the results that you were looking for, guys, don't forget that we do have an amazing trading community and I will leave that information down below where you can improve your trading skills and learn how to be a better trader. Okay, so let's first talk about OTC. What is OTC? Well, OTC basically stands for over the counter. And these are basically price rates of assets like the Euro USD, the Euro Canadian dollar, the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. But these are rates that are provided by the broker and they're not necessarily identical to regular market rates. So if you ever have the opportunity, if you compare a chart that is in OTC format versus a regular market chart, you're going to see that they are very different. Slight uh, price deviation and of course they move very differently as well and that is why for the most part there are regular strategies which we have covered here on our channel that you use during regular market hours and then there are OTC strategies like what we're really talking about today that are more tuned and fine-tuned for you to trade during these OTC hours or trading on weekends and so depending on the broker that you have um, you will have OTC conditions to, uh, obviously during the weekends when markets are closed but they will also activate automatically on your broker platform 
during hours where there's not a whole lot of trade volume. Now, in this particular case, we love to use Quotex. Quotex is an amazing broker, guys. Very reliable for trading for withdrawals, but they also provide free demo accounts that you can use anytime, up to $10,000 in trading funds that you can use whenever you want, as many times as you want. And it's a great way, guys, to practice and back test whenever you're trying out any new strategy. So, for the fact that if this is the first time you're gonna be trying out this strategy or any new strategies you come across, please, guys, back test and practice on a demo account first. If you're looking for a new broker or looking for a demo account to use, I'll leave the link down below in the video description. But the reason why I'm pointing this out, guys, is because when uh, trading volume is dropped during certain hours of the day, um, OTC is automatically kicked in. And in this live session that you are about to watch, um, I was trading around five o'clock Eastern time, my time in the afternoon, okay? And obviously OTC kicks in on weekends, just to clarify. Now let's talk numbers in relation to this particular strategy. If we look here on our broker guys, uh, we can see that actually this is this is not even showing all of my trades here. We did a total of 13 trades. It's only showing 10. So let's actually go here to the main spreadsheet here. Um, and if we go down, um, so when we did this trading session, this was on September uh, 13th. So right here was our first trade, uh, Australian dollar versus the Japanese yen. Again, as you can see, everything is formatted in OTC. So this was our first trade of the session. Uh, it was a losing trade followed by a couple of winning trades followed by a couple more losing trades. So it was a bit of a rough start, but as you can see, as we progressed with the session, we ended up having a great turnout with a total of 13 trades, losing only three. So 10 winning trades out of 13 guys was a phenomenal turnout given us, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if my math is right here. I'm going to have to double check this, um, but I think it was like a 75, 76 ish. Uh, win rate which is pretty good giving us a nice profit return and again following this strategy that we're going to be going over today so before we actually go over the rules of this strategy let's actually share with you the live footage of these very trades that we had taken every single one of these trades that you see here the wins the losses everything i'm going to show you the live footage of the session and then once we watch that footage we'll come back and we'll go over the good stuff the rules of the strategy the indicators we're going to be implementing that will help us find our trading positions and then i'm also going to share with you an extra tool that i had implemented that helped us increase our performance win rate. all right so let's roll the footage
Okay, guys, so now let's go over the rules of this strategy. And I also want to point out one thing. Um, this strategy was brought to my attention by a couple of colleagues, um, actually a little over a couple of months ago, give or take. And I was actually back testing this strategy for a couple of months. Actually, well, obviously not during the time that I was sick, um, but up until that point, you know, I, every single week I had been back testing this strategy for a couple of months. So again, guys, I do encourage you to do the same thing, not just with this strategy, but any new strategy you come across in your trading venture, always back test and always practice on a demo account so that way if you make any mistakes you're not making those mistakes with your live account but you're gonna see guys that this strategy is very very simple so let's go over the rules of the strategy and the indicator the indicators that we're gonna be using one of them of course is a moving average okay and this is actually a customized moving average that we're gonna go over right now in terms of settings um, we're gonna change the period here or the length depending on what broker terminologies uh, your broker provides uh, we're gonna change this to 28 and this is going to be a smooth moving average, okay? Not an SMA, not a WMA, not an EMA. This is a smooth moving average, okay? Very important, because again, this is designed specifically for trading OTC weekend market hours. Now, it doesn't matter what color you use. Um, I'm gonna make this a little bit thick so it's a little easier to see. Um, and I just like to use yellow for the fact that it's just easier, but this is where you're gonna be using guys This is one of our first indicators. We're gonna be using a 28 smooth moving average, okay? Now, we're going to use another indicator as well to give us added confluence for finding our buys and sell trades, and that is going to be the RSI, also referred as the Relative Strength Index. And these are custom settings as well, so let's just go over this. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see. All right, so if we go over the settings, the default settings for the RSI typically is anywhere between 10, 13, or 14. We're going to change that period or the length, and we're going to change it to 5. Okay, we're gonna change it to five, overbought, oversold levels set to 70 and 30. Now, what's also cool about the strategy because you're gonna be trading OTC, you're gonna be trading on the weekends, which are different conditions compared to if you're trading during regular market hours. What you can also do, if you are trading with an asset or trading during a time where the asset itself and the volatility of the candles are very slow or pretty much dead candles, which with not a whole lot of movement, what you could do during those conditions is actually adjust your overbought and oversold levels to 60 and 40 okay but again that's only recommended if you are trading assets that are practically dead if not moving um those will be ideal conditions for uh 60 and 40 for your overbought and oversold but again the period would still be set to five all right so once you have your indicator set up guys this is pretty much what it's going to look like and let's actually quickly go over the rsi real quick just to kind of give you an understanding of you know when we're looking for buys and sell trades so we have our 70 level we have our 30 level and with this RSI for this particular strategy, we're using this as levels of support and resistance, right? When price is overbought, right, at the 70 level, what happens? Price tends to go back down. So these will be opportune, opportune moments to enter for potential sell trades. Whereas if price comes down here on the RSI on the 30 level, these are oversold conditions. And in these conditions, we are looking for potential buy trades, all right? But obviously we're not gonna be just relying on the RSI. We need to combine that with the moving average, which we have here. Here. So to enter buys and sell trades are as follows. Actually, just to sign up before we get into the buys and sell trades, I just want to clarify, guys, that we are on a one minute chart. So that means that every single candlestick you see here represents a one minute time period of price data. This is very, very important. We're on a one minute chart. However, we're going to be targeting two minute trades. Now, if you're using this broker, you go here to where it says switch time, you can click it twice. And from here, you can select one minute, two minute, three minute, and so on expiration times, depending on what strategy or time frame you are following. Now here with Quotex, with this particular broker, this is one of the things, uh, another feature that I love about this is that every expiration time you choose is a fixed time, meaning that if you select a one minute time frame, uh, excuse me, one minute expiration, you're going to get the full one minute expiration time. If you select two minutes, three minutes, or so on, whatever you select for your expiration time, you're going to get that full time and the reason why i'm clarifying this guys is because i know that there are brokers out there that have a fixed time option that you need to turn on or off okay so if you're following this strategy and you have that fixed time option that you could turn on or off make sure that fixed time is turned on if you do not turn it on and let's say you target a you know one minute trade or two minute trade you might not get the full one minute or two minutes you might get 50, uh, 50 seconds instead of the full minute or 45 seconds. And as you know, guys, when it comes to binary trading, 
every second counts. Even a fraction of a second can make the difference between a winning trade and a losing trade. So for those of you who are using those brokers with fixed time options, make sure it's on. But if you're using this broker, you have nothing to worry about because what you select here is the time that you will get. Okay guys, so when we're looking for buy trades, we wanna first ensure that market is above our moving average, all right? And basically what we're doing is as price is above our moving average, we wanna wait until price comes down and makes contact with our moving average, okay? That is when we're gonna start getting ready for entering a buy trade, but we do not enter for a buy trade just yet. Once we have contact, as you can see in this region, price came down, made contact with the wick of our moving average. What we then want to look at is the RSI. And because we are looking for buy trade, we are looking to see that the RSI is in an oversold condition, all right, which occurred at this candle, okay? So what we wanna do is wait until we have confirmation of both contact and oversold conditions, which occurred here. So you would have entered at the wake of contact of this EMA here, you would have entered for a two minute trade, one, two, this would have been a profitable trade. And then shortly after guys, after just only a couple minutes later, we had another trading position here as well. Price came back down, tested and touched and wicked off of our moving average. And as you can see from our RSI, we are oversold once again. So we would have entered one, two, this would have been a profitable two minute buy trade. Now, if we're looking for a sell trade, obviously same principles, but in the complete opposite direction. Now, what we wanna do is ensure that price is below our moving average. Now, we want price to come up and make contact of our moving averages. But here's the important part, guys. Again, we are waiting for confirmation, right, of not only the contact of the moving average and the market, but we also wanna wait for confirmation of our RSI. Because as you can see here, this candle here, right, this bearish candle here wicked up, made contact with our EMA, uh, excuse me, not our EMA, our smooth moving average. But looking at our RSI, we were not overbought just yet. So we would not have entered here. We would have entered at the point here where this bullish candle came up, made contact with our moving average, and we had confirmation and we were oversold on the RSI. We would have entered here, one, two, this would have been a profitable trade. And we see that here as well, where we have contact of our moving averages and the markets, but we do not enter the trade until our RSI is fully overbought in this area over here. So we would ignore all of these areas up until we had confirmation of our RSI, enter for a one, two minute trade. As you can see guys, this would have been profitable trades. Now, I do wanna clarify one thing, guys, as you saw from the live footage, you know, following these very principles with the moving average and the RSI, um, it does work very well, but you'll notice in that live footage, I also implemented another indicator and that was the stochastics oscillator. And the reason why I did this, guys, is because although the RSI and the moving average work out very, very well, there are times where you might get a little bit of fake outs or false signals. So by incorporating the stochastics, all right, which you saw in the live footage, helped us give that added level of confluence with the fact that we are still using the overbought and oversold parameters of the stochastic oscillator, but we are also using the stochastics in terms of the crossover and the upward or downward momentum to give us that added confluence that we are here, that it is safe to enter a buy or sell trade. And just to clarify, guys, I'm gonna share with you the custom settings for the stochastics as well. Uh, if we go here, K period set to five, three period for D, smooth and period to three, 80 and 20 for overbought and oversold. Now again, with this strategy, we are incorporating overbought and oversold conditions between the stochastics, the RSI, and of course the contact of the moving average in the markets. But don't forget guys, you never wanna just rely on indicators for place and trades. You also need to incorporate your analysis and identify your key levels. And by doing that guys, it's going to greatly improve your trading and also help you anticipate upcoming moves. You saw from the live footage that there were some entry levels that we entered a little bit too prematurely because we were anticipating some rejection levels based on our support and resistance analysis but using that in addition into the indicators here uh, you can see that even though we had a bit of a rocky star with a couple of losing trades here and here we ended up finishing strong with a 10 out of 13 winning trades so ladies and gentlemen that is the strategy and make sure guys that if you are new to this strategy or any strategy back test this on a demo account again I'll leave the link down below if you want to check it out guys again it's free you can use it whenever you want and if you're new to trading or struggling in your trading check out our our trading community down below in the video description i will leave the link so you can check it out improve your training skills and of course empower you to master any strategies you come across in your trading journey guys so sorry for the background noise i don't know if you can hear it, but the landscapers are now doing their thing so i'm gonna cut the video guys hope you enjoyed it again any questions need help with anything drop a comment down below or email me directly anytime thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed it see you on the next one